The famous historian Kenneth Scott Lauderette, he calls 1815 to 1914 the great century of world missions. You'll find that in many history textbooks, any books on, on missions. There's a little bit of a problem with that, though, <clears throat> in that Lauderette died in 1968. And in the past four decades since his death, the church has just exploded worldwide. And, and I believe today, if Lauderette was alive, he might call the, the 19th century the great century, but then he would call the 20th greater, and maybe the 21st the greatest. And I want to mention a little bit how this has happened. Again, kind of on the back of these waves of missions that have taken place. First of all, to the seaport areas, then just generically into the interiors of nations, and then once in all these nations, defining and understanding the 14,000 people groups that are there, targeting them and beginning to really focus on reaching all of them for Christ. What that's created in the world as this, I'll just mention a few bullet points here. For example, Africa, the continent of Africa, this large body, once known as the dark continent, in 1900, only 4% of Africa was Christian, 4%. But today, south of the Sahara Desert, the, the north is Muslim primarily, but south of the Sahara Desert in Africa today, there are 300 million people that profess to know Christ. That's almost 50% of the people that live below the equator. A stunning reversal and outpouring of God's Spirit. In fact, many people believe that the majority of the Christians in the world in 20 years will live in the continent of Africa. <clears throat> Latin America, <clears throat> 100 years ago, was a sleepy Catholic continent. If you'd had people raise their hands to say if they were born again in Latin America, Central America, and South America, 100 years ago, 50,000 hands would have gone up. Okay, 100 years ago. Only 50,000 evangelicals are born-again people. But if you had them raise their hand today in, well, about the year 2000, for example, instead of 50,000 hands going up, 100 million hands would go up. 100 million. Some of the biggest churches in the world are in Chile, Argentina, Brazil. Brazil is, is actually the second largest missionary sending nation in the world today. Huge, huge change in this era of the third wave of, of missions. China itself. China's gone through many things, but one thing it's gone through in the last 50 years is the world's biggest revival in any single nation. China's gone from one million believers in 1949, when the Communist Revolution took place. It's hard to know, but the best estimates are 100 million today in 50 years. One million to 100 million in 50 years. That's the largest single revival or outpouring of God's Spirit in any one nation in all of history in that short a time period. Today, which we almost didn't see taking place, there are more Christians in the Southern Hemisphere than in the North. Today, more Christians live below the equator. Remember, Christianity went to Europe, that's in the North. They went to the Americas, that's in the north. This is where the church has been, no longer. There's a, there's a good book out there by Patrick Johnstone. It's called The Church is Bigger Than You Think. And one thing he points out is that just amazingly in the 20th century, as the church exploded in these areas of the world, now more Christians are in the southern hemisphere than in the northern. <clears throat> in William Carey's day, when he wrote his first little book on missions, remember that? That, that big long title, remember that? 87 pages. There were 730 million people in the world by his estimate. 730 million. Today, 200 years later, 10 times. 7.3 billion. Carey estimated in his day, <clears throat> we're talking about countries now, not people groups, he estimated there were 100 totally unreached countries 200 years ago. Today, that's down to only 38. And it's a tremendous advance of the gospel. 
And, and here's another one to really wrap your mind around. It's what we call the 70-70-70 kind of a rule. You need to kind of expand your brain to think about this one. 70% of all people who've ever given their lives to Christ have done so since 1900. That's the first 70. 70% 70 of all believers who will be in heaven have come to Christ since 1900. Secondly, 70% of those have given their lives to Christ since 1950. And thirdly, 70% of those have given their lives to Christ since 1980. If you were to draw that as a, as a graph, it means for 1900 years of history, growth was kind of like this, flat line way down here, and then it just exploded. Now, of course, it also exploded in accord with population growth exploding. That is a part of it too. But it's been just amazing, amazing growth. The vast majority of the people who are believers today have gotten saved since 1980, and the majority of them since 50 and 1900. It's just amazing things have taken place in the 20th century and beyond. I mentioned to you that some missiologists have kind of calculated, you know, at different periods of time, the ratio of non-Christians to Christians in the world, non-Christians to Christians. In the year 100 AD, they estimate that the, the loss, the non-Christian world was 360 to one in 100 AD, after the early church had shared the gospel for about 70 years. Still, the lost were 360 times greater than the saved. And that, that went down over the years. By the time we get to the Reformation time period, it's down to 69 to 1. By the time you get to 1900, it's down to 27 to 1. By the time you get to 1950, it's down to 20 to 1. By 1980, it's down to 4 to 1. And today, it's down to 2 to 1. Meaning, again, a huge outpouring of the Spirit of God upon the world, especially in the last 30 or 40 years. But of course, all this building upon the waves that have gone before. Lewis Bush, one of the kind of the global missionary leaders today, said this, the spread of Christianity into the non-Western world is one of the greatest success stories of all of history. And that is true. But I finish by saying the greatest century, the completion of the Great Commission, is yet to come. And that we're going to talk about when we talk about the fourth wave.